what if I told you that I was really close to saying fuck this game? You wanna know why? The siege battles. If you don't know what you're doing, siege battles are kind of a chore and kind of a pain in the ass. If you do a siege battle kind of the way it feels like the developers wanted you to do it, you'd be losing quite a bit of your army in the process. So if you have any plans to continue an assault against a faction after the siege or if there's another army nearby that you needed to quickly defeat as well, you just forget it if you do a siege battle right away. But what if I told you it doesn't have to be that way? Because I have the strategies, the tactics, the know-how to make siege battles way easier. It's pretty much more strategy ending. There's no real cheese tactics unless you want to count duping the AI a little bit as a cheese tactic, but it makes siege battles way more interesting in my opinion. So hold on to your dicks, kiss the homies goodnight, and prepare yourself for the ultimate god. I'm here in custom battle. And I'm trying to set up a similar setup of what you would kind of look like in the campaign of a siege battle. So let's say this is like a, I don't know, mid game to slightly end game since I have a little Myrmidon swordsman here. We'll say mid to end game tier kind of army. You know, probably for Pythian spears, they'll have renowned Pythians, but whatever. Uh, I chose Achilles because you want either a fast unit, which Aginian runners, because Achilles I think is one of the better seizures for this strategy or some unit of low tier that you don't really care about if it gets hurt injured or even wiped out so this is like something that i would usually do so i got like my front line flankers uh charges usually i'd have more range than this but let's say i planned ahead for siege battle and i decided to go less because in siege battles Chariots, cavalry, and range are not quite as useful. Not for this strategy anyways. Alright. And here we are in the battle. The siege battle itself. Yes, very pretty. Nice looking place. So what you're going to do first is you're going to divide your army into two groups. You're going to have what I call the infiltration group. And then you have your main army. For the infiltration group... You're going to look around and find some sort of forest or tall grass to get hide in. So this is perfect right here. You got tall grass. And you have a gate here that they're going to go into and it'll be fine. So even in the infiltration group, I like to subdivide them as well. You're going to have your runners that are going to run up to certain points and capture the location. And then you're going to have your combat units, which once the points are captured, the combat units are going to go into the front gate and then... Once everybody's inside, I'll get to that part later. For the runners, you have two options. You can either do some a speedy unit. So for example, Achilles's Aginian runners are super fast, which are great. Or you could do some sort of cannon fodder unit. So young spears, militia, something super cheap, something you don't care that gets damaged or even just wiped out. So all you need them is to run up there as quick as possible before the towers can do any real damage and open these gates or capture these towers so that way they don't hurt the rest of your unit. Once these are captured, the rest of your infiltration group can go in and, you know, we'll do our thing then. So what I'm gonna do, I'll just pick one of each, screw it. Quick one and a can fodder one. As for the combat, you can use heavy stuff or you can use other quick stuff. I'm gonna choose Myrmidons and let's go with Champion of Pythia. And usually, if you have slingers or any kind of ranged unit, I usually put them in with the infiltration group because that's the most combat that they'll see. Once the gates are open, you can just have them go in. Whereas if you had ranged units, just you know, climb up ladders and get up on the ramparts, they're kind of useless because they'll just get killed by whatever's guarding up there. And you can't have ranged units just covering your dudes because if they're standing out here shooting in while well, the gates are shooting them, they'll mess them up quick. Now one question is, why use quick ones or cannon fodder over say the heavy dudes that, that have more block chance for projectiles? Yeah, I don't think, pretty sure these towers ignore block chance for projectiles. Because I've noticed whether you're using cannon fodder or you're using top tier, they take about the same damage. 
Even with the heroes, like you, it's more like a percentage kind of damage. All right, so now that we got our infiltration group. Oh yeah, one more thing. You don't want to make these guys too big, because if your if your infiltration group is too big, the AI will just cheat and magically see them hidden, even if they're hidden. You can see they're all hidden. Even this, I'm hoping, won't be too big. So now, as for the rest of the army, I like to set them up in the exact opposite location of where the infiltration group is. This way, they get plenty of time to do the thing. All right, so this is what the army looks like. I like to group my infiltration group just so I know which is which, especially if you have like a, I don't know, secondary army coming in, which is also makes it easier. One pro tip for uh, siege battles is you definitely want to outnumber the defenders. Like that's kind of huge. If you don't outnumber the defenders, even if it's even, it's going to make your life a lot more difficult because even if the infiltration group gets in there, they could send literally half of their army match, equally match this and equally match this and they'll make your job a lot harder. At that point, you better hope you have higher tier units or you just have to outplay them completely in order to win this battle without suffering too many casualties. That's really the point of the strategy is to win battles without suffering too much casualties. Cause you could just, you can just have everybody haul ass into the walls, everybody climb and duke it out on the ramparts, but you're going to lose so much of your army that your pretty much strategy for the next like three to five turns is healing up your army or recruiting again. Whereas with this, you can continue your campaign against whatever faction you want to take over. All right, so let's get started. All right, so as you can see, I might have made my infiltration group a little bit too big because normally they don't even really start in this location unless they can kind of see them. So I might have done like one less unit. I'd say about 25 to 30% of your army should be the infiltration group, but we'll see how this goes. What you're going to do with this army is really Achilles or your hero is really the only one who's going to be doing any work. You're just going to have him run up and bash the gate open. If you have a ranged hero like Odysseus or Hippolyta, there's an option here to go from range to melee. You just toggle melee and then have them do the same thing. Now, pick, which, pick your two runners and just have them get in there. I'm actually going to have the Aegean runners go for the farthest one because they are faster. And as for everybody else, I like to have the, to have them wait as close as they can get <clears throat> to the gate. As close as they can get to the gate without being hit by the gate. So that way, once the gates are open, they could rush in. And it looks like these guys, they usually prioritize the bigger the army. Are attacking the gates. So they're not too worried about this one. Anyways, the point of Achilles bashing down this gate is so that way once these guys make it inside, the AI is going to react in a number of couple of ways. They're either going to send a few units at a time to deal with these guys or they're going to just have everybody guard here immediately. See, they're already kind of reacting. Now, in order, once everybody leaves here to either guard here or deal with these guys, that's when you're going to have your hero capture the main gates and just have everybody get in here. You don't have to wait for the hero to capture the gates in order to send everybody in. Like two towers aren't going to do too much damage to, you know, your army as a whole. But if you want to play it safe and just play the long game, you can. All right. So now the guys are kind of on here. Make sure you send them exactly on where you want them to be. Mainly capture the two stuff that are the biggest threat to these guys. Like this gate. Yeah, it's not even going to really hurt anybody. You Many have these. The enemy tower. As you can see, they're already reacting. It's kind of unfortunate that they start in the middle. Sometimes they do that. You can't really control it. But I think the two versus two, even though club militia, shield spearmen could definitely beat young spears and... Aginian runners, as long as we capture this, if uh, you know they feel like getting on We're here, about to capture the gates. I guess they didn't feel like getting on here. All right, so once this is captured, have them start setting up. Yeah, 
Yeah, normally they just all go on here. So it looks like we got kind of unlucky this round, but that's all right. We'll do a more challenging, a little bit of an extra challenge to it, you know what I mean? You can show that even this situation is salvageable. More than salvageable. You have captured the gates. Now that the gates are captured, immediately send in your dudes. So looks like in this specific case, we're just gonna have a hold the line kind of segment. Secondly, I thought this gate was shooting at them. That'd be cool. But yeah, this is why also you want kind of faster units like swordsmen or more of these guys because champions of Pythia are kind of slow. You actually want these guys in here as much as possible in case the AI does actually react to this. Because sometimes they will. Now keep an eye on the gate. I'm going to pause real quick to actually explain something real quick. Sometimes the AI will randomly open their gate. Just, you know, not bust it down, but just open it. And if you're not paying attention, your hero will go in and start fighting them. Now, Achilles is unbreakable, so you don't have to worry about morale stuff with him. But with other heroes, when they're surrounded by a bunch of enemies and not enough allies, their morale will go down really fast. So if they get into combat, they'll, they can get routed pretty quick if you're not paying attention. And another unfortunate thing is sometimes once your hero runs in, they'll close the gate behind them. And your hero will be trapped in here, which would really suck. So pay attention, try to pay attention to what's going on here. If the hero is, you know, the gate just magically opens, just send them to run away, send them to send them back to the line and have them chill there until they close again, then go back and bust it down. Once you do bust down the gate, just have him run back. And pretty much it's up to your infiltrators now. So we're going to have the Young Spears actually go around. Yeah, the Infiltrators are going to do most of the combat here. Because the point is, you actually want to defeat whatever they're sending to deal with your Infiltrators. So that way they send more and more people over here. And you know, it's a divide and conquer kind of strategy. Alright, let's see. Are they going to attack me head on here? or? So we're going to send our Myrmidons around as well. Champions of Pythia. I'm probably gonna have them hold the line and have these dudes. Alright, looks like they are. Alright, so we're gonna have them switch. Champions of Pythia do what they do best and hold the line. Myrmidons are gonna flank. Probably gonna have to have them help here. Alright. Now let's take a look at the gate. 96% so almost there Usually you get a notification when it's knocked down, but not always it's kind of weird So I just keep an eye on that the enemy gates have been Yep, destroyed. see so you can click on this enemy gates destroyed now have Achilles run back Because he will die if he just tackles everybody here have him run back wait until they send more more units away Usually they send them a little at a time, so it's pretty easy for your, uh, you know, infiltrators to take them out. They're either going to send them back to deal with your infiltrators, your hero or they're going to have them all guard this. If they just continue to stand there, let's see what's going on here. Just the gates, yep. If they continue to stand here, then have your infiltrators start heading toward this. This will force the AI to react and start heading back here. Alright, so I'm going to turn off fire at will. So not shooting our own people. Get them in here. And as you can see, these guys are already done. It's nice that these guys will run out here and get annihilated by our gates now. So that's the champions of Pythia. No Alright, so now they're completely shattered, so... I'm gonna have these dudes go here. These guys are shattered, so now we're just gonna have them chill here. Usually in end game stuff, the garrisons will have some high tier stuff. Usually like one or two really high tier units. So I threw in one of my Mycenae's top tier units here, just just to, you know, kind of simulate that. I try to 
make it as close to the campaign as possible. But we'll see how that goes. Alright, so now that our infiltration unit has defeated their little vanguard, as you can see, pretty much half the army is just dead and gone. Now you're pretty much just waiting for this to happen. So now that as you can see Achilles, uh, or not Achilles, everybody else here is running away, sending in Achilles. We can either play the long game, you know, have these guys retreat a little bit and uh, have Achilles capture this. That way people don't take damage or you could just send the rest of them in. I think in this particular case, since this is just a demo, I'm just going to have them all go in. If this is the campaign and I really wanted to preserve health and, you know, unit health, I wouldn't do it. But in this case, for the sake of time and for the sake of speeding up the video, I will. So, so yeah, at this point, we're pretty much one. Not too much damage. I mean, I took some damage from the Aryan army. As you can see, this is what the gates do. Like, if you don't play it safe and just capture this first, that's quite a bit of damage just for running forward. You would think it being such a large number of people wouldn't be too bad, or maybe they, maybe one or two units will take damage, but nah. Those gates will mess you up. Yeah, at this point, this is just clean up. And that's pretty much the guide in a nutshell. I didn't play the ending part too well. Could have been done better. But overall, here's the victory. Alright, now I'm going to put things into practice. So this is just the beginning of the Achilles campaign. I'm going to show you why. This is kind of This is kind of good. So I'm going to defeat this army, take this, and have a pretty decent amount of you know health and stuff. So I actually continue on with doing other stuff afterwards. I'm not going to show you the afterwards. I'm just going to show you the beginning steps of it and just how it looks actually in practice. All right, I'm not going to show you the actual battle just because, you know, this is a siege guide, not a land battle guide. I almost always do replenishment pretty much even throughout the entire campaign. Sometimes I'll do the treasury, but you know. Make them our slaves. So yeah, not too diff pretty much with any faction, it's not too difficult to win that first battle. Get that easy level up, we'll just go with, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. So now that that's Victory done... Was never in Let's go get Histea. Cut them down. So usually garrisons aren't too, aren't too bad. They'll have mostly fodder in the beginning of the game anyways. Mid mid campaign, end campaign, it's a bit different story. But yeah, light spearmen, some fodder. Usually they have one or two decent units, like light spearmen and renowned slingers. Luckily Achilles starts with some good stuff, so let's go ahead and do this. Alright, dry weather's fine by me. So once again. Let's go ahead and pick and choose our spots. So let's see, what do we got? No gates there, it could be a potential one. So I think over here is not too bad. Yeah, let's do it right here. So a nice little patch of hideable grass or forest or whatever. So once again, we could do quick ones. We could do fodder. I like to put my range in there. And because my army is so small, I think this will be it for now. We'll get rid of fire at will and skirmish mode for these guys. Your boy Achilles is going to haul ass cheeks up there. And while that's going on, your infiltrator is going to be doing their infiltrating thing. We only have two. So yeah, we're just, so I guess these two are just going to get in there. Actually, what I could have done is, is under just keep them hidden. For like the first maybe minute or two and let everybody go this way that way they still think that this is the only army here now one thing you could do with unbreakable heroes is you can, if they give you a chance you can actually kind of just have them run in there and just run away that way they'll divide their army even further chasing your hero chasing these guys and then you can have these guys get in there now we're pretty much just setting up for taking on whatever guys they send our way. Let's see, what do they plan on doing? That's ah, alright. Let's attack him anyways. 
And there we go. Usually with the way these setups or these uh, towns are set up, it's pretty easy to get flanks going. Oh yeah, it's a good one. Always very satisfying when that happens. Don't think there's any need to waste ammo with these guys. You can have you can swing them around and you know meet up with these guys, or you could just go here. It's up to you. I think I'm gonna have them swing around in this case. And actually challenge these guys. The enemy gates have been destroyed. Alright, enemy gates is gone. And since there's no one here, you just have Achilles capture it. If there's a lot of people here, have them run back until everybody goes away. Alright, so that's captured. Have these guys get in here. Achilles can now come and help. Yeah, at this point, I'm pretty much just cleaning up. I think we'll be fine. But yeah, that's pretty much it. The foe has sighted your hit As you can see, I'm pretty much just cleaning up, just surrounding them. That's basically it. But yeah, that's Siege Battles 101. Okay, so now what do you do if, let's say, a city has a pretty big garrison and an army in it? Now, I know pretty much no other city other than Troy is going to have a 20 stack garrison. But this is the only save I had that kind of had uh, a close enough example. Ignore these guys. Just pretend Agamemnon and his stuff, or I guess technically this is Sparta. Pretend Sparta is not here. So say you wanted to take this settlement, and you got Hector here with 17 people and a pretty decent garrison. I think normal settlements can go up to 15. But then 15 and 17, even though it's pretty... Uh, pretty stacked even if, especially if you have like a 20 stack and just a 10 so what the strategy for this part is is have Courage your larger army go into ambush stance an ambush. and then just keep your 10 here most of the time the ai will either spire ambush and it'll just say your ambush was foiled and they just won't do anything which in that case next turn just go back to ambush stance and have your smaller army just chill there or a lot of almost every time the AI will actually come out of their settlement to go attack your smaller army because they'll think that that army is just there by itself and you know if it's small it's pretty much easy pickings and then that's when you could double team it kill the army and then you employ the siege tactics as for the ambush itself it doesn't matter if the ambush is successful or not it could be a foiled ambush and if they still attack that then you know you're still double teaming them and the ambush can be foiled in one of two ways. Either they'll just see it from like wherever they are and they'll just, you know, say that they spotted your guys and they won't move. Or they'll attack first and then the ambush will be foiled. But by the time they see that the ambush was there, uh, you're already double teaming them. And it's pretty good to be like a pretty decent distance above. You want him to be just at the edge of his uh, movement. Cause so that way he can't run back. Because if you're like right here or super close, he'll just run back to his thing and, you know, there'll be no point of it. But yeah, that's how you deal with uh, garrisoned armies. Just make it look like you have one small weak army out there. Set the second army hidden in ambush and let them come out and attack. If they Sometimes they don't come out and attack. In that case, you could just set it to raiding. Yeah, let's go into Troy itself. But you can just set it to raid stance. Uh, there'll be a bit of a penalty because you know stamina and battle will be winded, but that's fine as long as you have your bigger army in ambush stance ready to pounce and attack these, you're pretty much good to go. All right, and that was my little guide to how I do sieges. Makes the game a lot more enjoyable. Um, there's many things I would change with the sieges, like for example, in Bronze Age times the walls didn't really look like that they went more from a you know fantasy point of view rather than 
a historical one. If you look at the ruins of Mycenae and, you know, uh, other Bronze Age places, the walls were nowhere near that big. This is closer to, like, medieval walls than Bronze Age walls. The way I would change it is put in a mechanic that places emphasis on uh, land battles. You know what? Make it encourageable for AI and players to want to do more land battles than siege battles. And then another thing I would do is I would get rid of the turret towers. I think they make it a bit more pain in the ass. Put in specialized siege units, maybe something like that. Like units that get a bonus when attacking ramparts, you know? That'd be cool. Or uh, make siege equipments their own units. Like I think Rome 2 might have had something like that. I'm not sure. I didn't play too much of Rome 2. I could talk about how I would improve it in this separate video. I haven't thought it out completely on how I would improve siege battles. I just have like kind of a general outline of what I would want and what could be better. There's a lot of stuff about this game that I would probably change and I'll probably make a video on that in the future. But thanks for watching. You know, hit that like, comment, subscribe. Uh, follow me on Twitch. I stream often, very often, you know. And uh, thanks for watching. Peace, biatches.